Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. This is episode 274, and we are finally, hopefully, I'm going to stay on track because my goal is to, before the movie comes out, get through all the Matt Gargan Venom stuff. So that way, after the movie comes out, we can get back to talking about Eddie Brock and then get into the Flash Thompson stuff. So I appreciate you guys, you know, being very patient with me on these. And I know it's been a while, but we've had so much movie news coming out. It's been hard for me to make time to read this graphic novel, which is Thunderbolts. And uh, this is picking up after the Warren Ellis run. And this is a new version of the Thunderbolts. Same, same characters and same everything, just different creative team. And we have uh, Christos Gage, who recently wrote and uh, worked on one of the writers on the new Spider-Man PS4 game. And someone who's worked with Dan Slott a lot during his run. And he's also writing the new upcoming spider Deadin story arc that's coming out soon. And I like Christos. I've met him a few times in person. He's a very nice guy. And uh, I like his writing. And I typically, you know, when I see his name on a book, I pick it up and give it a chance. And I'm very rarely let down, in my opinion. I, I like the guy a lot. He's really awesome. And I think he tries to tap into characters the best he can. And I think he likes to make uh, you know, really fun and interesting references to past continuity, just to show you that he does is a longtime fan of comic books and has read comic books for many years. Uh, so this storyline that's collected, it's the Secret Invasion trade paperback. I think it's also called... Um, uh, ru running the Asylum or something like that is the name of the actual story. But in this trade paperback, uh, you actually get seven issues or so. You get four issues of Running the Asylum, uh, which are actual Thunderbolt issues. And then you get three one-shot storylines. And the first one-shot is kind of based off of, um, I think, Swordsman and, and one of you know some of those characters. And I think the second one is based off Radioactive Man. Oh, the first one, I think, is is Moonstone and, uh, and Songbird, I think, is the first book. Um, and then so what Christos Gabe did was he knew he was going to be taking over the book to temporarily after Warren Ellis left and leading you know the book into the new direction it was going to go in and so you know he was tasked to wrap up the Warren Ellis story which I can imagine must have been pretty daunting because Warren Ellis did a really great job on that book overall even though I didn't really like some of the stuff he did with Venom in particular uh, I did like some of the stuff he did with the other characters so Christos Gage is coming in to basically wrap that run up and then help set up the next version of where these characters were, to go, were gonna go. And uh, that's a big task to do. And I thought he handled it pretty well. So we have these three one-shots. Like I said, the first one kind of focusing on uh, Moonstone and Songbird, I believe. And then the second one was called like International Incident. And that one had uh, Radioactive Man and Swordsman. And in that story, Swordsman kind of makes a backhand deal with Arnim Zola, uh, you know, from uh, from the uh, Captain America movie. I think he was in the second one uh, where he was like the head and the computer thing. And he kind of, um, or maybe was that Arnim Zola? I think it was. I can't remember. I'm like getting all the, my, my Avenger characters confused. I didn't grow up an Avengers fan, so I don't have like a encyclopedic knowledge of them like I do the X-Men. Uh, but so, yeah, he made some kind of back deal with Arnim Zola, and Arnim Zola is going to try to clone... Uh, swordsman's sister because he's like look I just want my sister back to life so I'm going to give you a piece of my sword because you remember he wrapped his sister's skin like a part of her skin around his sword handle because in order for their powers to work they have to touch each other and so her you know that her skin like a piece of her skin is wrapped around his sword handle so he's always touching a part of her so he could use his powers I know pretty dark stuff and weird stuff uh, so he was like hey here's a piece of her from this sword hilt can you go clone her? And he's like, and if you do, I'll let you get away and I'll tell Norman Osborn you got away from me. And uh, so he's like, all right, fine. So he runs off. Then there's another one shot that focuses on Venom, uh, Matt Gargan, and Norman Osborn. And this one's pretty cool. And Ben Oliver does the artwork in most of these. And I love Ben Oliver's stuff. I really am a big fan of this guy. I actually wish he drew the whole book because unfortunately when we get into the next part of this, the running the asylum four issues, I am not a big fan of Fernando Blanco's artwork. It just doesn't work for me. Uh, luckily, Christos Gage's writing was interesting enough, um, and he was trying to tap into that Warren Ellis thing, but also kind of add his own flair to it, and then also set these characters up for where they were going to go after this. So again, like I said, big task to do, and I can't imagine it was easy. Uh, but he did it pretty well, in my opinion. So what we have is we have uh, this Venom story where Venom uh, kind of meet, he meets up with some old villains that he knew when he was a scorpion. It was like Whirlwind and Mr. Hyde. Um, and I think there was like a, a Tiger Shark was there and Boomerang, um, who's in the current Spider-Man books right now. And Venom kind of makes a deal with them and they're like, hey, look, we want to get back to Norman Osborn and you might want to as well because he might hold a grudge. You remember this job you pulled way back in the day, which again is Christos Gage acknowledging past continuity. And he was like, hey, remember that job you pulled well you kind of screwed over Norman Osborn so he'll probably put two and two together figure it out and he'll probably put you on a mission 
where you might not come back from. So why don't you team up with us? We'll double cross them now. We'll take them out. And uh, you just lead them to us. And so Venom's like, okay, I guess we'll do that. And so he goes to Norman Osborn and says, hey, I have a mission, but I just, it, it's personal. Uh, I want you and me to do it. You know, can we go? And then, you know, Norman Osborn can tell something's going on. So he's like, Mac, come clean with me. What's going on? So Mac ends up telling him, all right, it's these criminals and this is what they want to do. So then uh, Norman's like, all right, I'll play along. Let's go and pretend like I don't know and we'll set these guys up. And so that's kind of what happened. So it's like a double, double cross kind of storyline. And then at the end, Venom and Norman Osborn take down, uh, you know, these four like D-list villains. Uh, so that was a cool little one shot. And a lot of those things that happen in the one shot, they do set up the storyline from what's going to happen next, which is uh, running the asylum. And so, uh, you know, we have right off the bat, we have Swordsman. Uh, he brings his sister, or his sister shows up, and remember this is during Secret Invasion, so when she shows up, many people who didn't read that one shot thought this was a scroll, and even the team thinks it could be a scroll, because they start hearing these rumors about a scroll invasion, uh, because, you know, uh, Iron Man found out that Elektra was a scroll, and it looks like there's like these sleeper cells of scrolls that have infiltrated humanity, and uh, the thing about Secret Invasion was it was a great a premise. It's basically invasion of the body snatchers to a degree, uh, just like a newer version of that using scrolls. And it was a really cool concept. But for me, I don't like this book at all. I don't. I don't like the Secret Invasion miniseries. I felt like it was really weakly put together and written. I think Lionel Prince Hugh drew the crap out of it, and it looked really good. But I think Brian Michael Bendis really dropped the ball on it. It was a story he was setting up for five years in his Avengers run, and I thought the payoff was really, really weak. Luckily, he followed it with Dark Avengers, which was probably my favorite thing. Bendis wrote during his time as an Avengers writer. Uh, so we'll be getting into that very, very soon. Uh, but in this one, this is Christos Gage, like I said, and Fernando Blanco, and they're setting up all this stuff from Secret Invasion. So they have to tie in to this major event. And Warren Ellis, I don't think he typically likes to do tie-in books. So he's like, yeah, you know what? I'm out. I'm leaving Thunderbolts. And so Christos Gage was, you know, luckily came in and, you know, tried to tie up those threads that Warren Ellis set up, but then also plant the seeds for the future stories and tie into Secret Invasion at the same time. So this book starts off and Swordsman gets his sister back. And you're like, okay, is it a scroll? And you're kind of, the whole team is like, is she a scroll? What's going on? And so they're trying to figure that out. Uh, but then meanwhile, you know, he's, you know, talking to her. He knows what she really is. She's a clone from Arnim Zola, but the team doesn't know that. So that kind of pays off later on. And then Marvel, uh, Captain Marvel, the, the guy version of Captain Marvel, uh, who's a character named Marvel, he shows back up and he attacks the Thunderbolts. He's like, you know what? I came back to Earth. I found out you guys exist, the supervillains, you know, taking down heroes. This is, you know, awful. I can't have this going on. So he comes right to Thunderbolts Mountain and beats the living crap out of everyone right in their home. You know, he busts through the wall, busts through the mountain of Thunderbolts Mountain beats up Norman, or not Norman Osborn, he, he kind of chills out, and he's just kind of watching the fight happen, but everyone else, Venom, everyone gets taken down, and it's crazy, uh, but this story, it doesn't have a ton of Venom in it until towards the end, so we'll get to some of the Matt Gargan stuff, um, other than that one shot, that's probably the most of Venom is in this trade paperback, unfortunately, uh, for us Venom fans, uh, but Marvel shows up, and then Norman Osborn realizes, hey, you're a scroll, and you know you're a scroll, and you have all these implanted memories to fool yourself into thinking you're the real Marvel, but you're not, we know he died, so why don't you talk to me. Let me, you know, let me try to get through to you. I hear voices in my head all the time. You know, he's Norman Osborn. He's a Green Goblin. He's like, so maybe I can help you. And then Marvel's like, no, I don't want any anything to do with this. So he kind of like takes off. And now the Thunderbolts have, you know, no home. They realize, okay, this is a full scale invasion. Scrolls have come to Earth and they've invaded. And so he's like, all right, let's put the team together and let's go to Washington D.C. That's where we're stationed, and that's where the government and Shield wants us. And we're gonna go there and we're gonna take the fight to the Scrolls. When Norman Osborn and the Thunderbolts arrive at Washington, D.C., everything is, like, you know, getting attacked big time. There's scroll versions of past Thunderbolt characters like Atlas, you know, who's someone who can grow and shrink and everything. He's kind of like a giant man. Uh, and then there's other characters that there's scroll versions of. There's ultimate, you know, there's, like, Spider-Man, like, various versions, black costume Spider-Man, red and blue Spider-Man, Scarlet Spider-Man, you know, all the different versions of Spider-Man. And then there's Robbie, who was Penance, you know, uh, from, he used to be Speedball, but then became Penance. And we talked about him in the second volume of Thunderbolts in a previous episode where, um, you know, he's kind of like trying to gain control of his powers and get his speedball powers back. Cause right now he's wearing an Iron Maiden suit to, you know, with needles inside of it to hurt him to activate this, you know, new form of power. He's cause he's got this weird PTSD thing after happy, after the events of Stanford, where his friends, the new warriors went in and attacked a, a bunch of villains on, on, you know, on TV. Cause they were like reality TV superhero stars and Nitro self-destructed and blew up. 
and he killed all these people in Stanford. So uh, what happens is, is when Pennant shows up, he starts seeing like scrolls shapeshift into victims that, you know, and they're saying they're from Stanford and stuff. And so they're like, the scrolls are really playing a mind game here. And and that's where like the main you know, secret invasion book, it didn't have a ton of stuff like this in it where the scrolls really were turning the screws on people. I had a, like a moment or two here or there, but for that main miniseries, I felt like that was pretty weak compared to some of the tie-in books who were really, these writers were really trying to be like, all right, let's really show the scrolls messing with these heroes. And uh, I see that a lot in this book. And so the scrolls really tried to kind of mess with uh, all of our, our characters. Uh, Venom even, they were like trying to twist Venom to get him to, you know, let loose and eat people. And luckily all these guys fight against that and they, they see through the bull crap and Norman Osborn gives like a really good speech basically like hey guys you know don't listen to them they're you know they're trying to get into your head they're manipulating you they're shape-shifting they're make, they're trying to make us look bad uh, we've been at this we've been playing this PR game for this past year as the Thunderbolts we've proven to everyone that we're heroes so let's keep that up let's show them that we're heroes even though obviously they're not but he's like let's win this PR game and let's show people we will save them and he's like we this is the ultimate chance to win over the American people and Norman Osborn had a good plan during this he reacted really well unlike norm you know unlike uh, iron man who was like caught off guard by this and all the other heroes who just weren't expecting this norman osborne's a supervillain and he thinks about contingency plans and he thinks about invasions he thinks about all these things so he was like we can turn this uh, you know around and make us look like the heroes and so that's his mission so they go in and they save washington dc and they beat the living crap out of the scrolls and they take down atlas scroll and spider-man scrolls and uh, Stanford zombie scrolls, they take down everyone and they save the day and they actually save Washington, D.C., which is pretty crazy. And there's like this great shot of Norman Osborn in front of the Lincoln Memorial and he's just kind of sitting there and he's like, this is my country. And he's like, and we're going to take it back. So after they save Washington, D.C., he gets the call that New York City is under attack and that's where the main event is happening from the main secret invasion book. And so he's like, wait a minute, what's going on? They're like, yeah, the Avengers, everyone's here and they're fighting scroll versions and they're fighting other heroes that may or may not be scrolls and the whole thing is hitting the fan right here in New York. Uh, can you get here? Can you be, you know, be back up? The government's like, please go in and save them. You saved Washington. So the president and everyone in the government are like, you just did the greatest thing for this country. Now go, you know, keep it up. Go save New York City. And Norman Osmond's like, all right, team, let's go do this. So he gathers his thunderbolts of psychopaths, Bullseye included. He's like, you know what, Bullseye? Be on camera. Kill as many scrolls as you want. The scrolls that look like Daredevil, kill them first. You know, like whatever you want to do. He's like, because trust me, the American people are going to cheer for this. And that's what they do. And they win over America <laughs> by, by saving everybody. And so they go to New York, and that's the next phase of their plan. And on their way to New York, Moonstone, she doesn't believe that uh, Swordsman's sister is actually human. Uh, so she ends up, you know, uh, her and Bullseye end up killing her after Swordsman gets knocked out. And so they kill Andrea, uh, you know, Swordsman's sister. And then when Swordsman gets up, he's like, what happened to my sister? And they're like, oh, the scrolls did it. And then so, because like Bullseye is like, wait, why, like, why did we just kill her? And, uh, or not, but, but Moonstone's like, why, hey, Bullseye, you killed her. And she's like, yeah, I thought she was a scroll. And he's like, she's not. And he's like, yeah, I, I didn't care either way. <laughs> I just wanted to kill somebody. And so she's like, well, she wasn't a scroll. So what are we going to tell Swordsman? He's like, I don't know. When he wakes up, we'll say the scrolls did it. So that's pretty much what they do. And they tell that to Norman Osborn. So Norman Osborn says, look, you know, you want to get revenge for your sister for dying uh, once again, even though she was a clone, you know, whatever. He was still like Swordsman was like, hey, this is the close I was ever going to get to have my sister back. Um, Norman Osborn's like, we'll use that rage and step up. And so Swordsman actually really steps up. He takes his sword and he, you know, charges all of his energy into it. And he's blasting, you know, scroll ships out of the sky. Uh, so Swordsman really steps up in this one and then Venom too Venom starts stepping up towards the end where he's just like you know cutting loose like Norman Osborn says you know when I tell you you can't eat people and stuff he's like yeah and he goes eat every scroll that you see and and uh, Venom's like really and he's like yes eat every scroll that you see and he goes in Bullseye he's like go nuts kill everything so Bullseye and Venom just start going through and plowing through scrolls left and right and it's so awesome you finally get to see, you know see those characters cut loose and just go nuts and be full psychopaths and then see people cheering them on. It's insane. And so as they're in the final battle in New York, once they land there, they start helping out the Avengers. And of course, Iron Man's like, I don't want, you know, Norman around. I don't want to have to watch my back when I'm around him. And, uh, and the, you know, the Norman's like, whatever. He's like, you're picking up rail guns. He's shooting, you know, scrolls, blowing their heads off and stuff. And he's like, come on. He's rallying. He's giving speeches. Even, he, you know, other heroes are like rallying behind him. And he's like taking the lead here. And then in the middle of the battle, um, Iron Man's suit starts to short out and he needs to go like recharge it and then there's like something happening in space with Thor so Iron Man the guy who's supposed to be in charge he's running shield at this time in the comics he's out there in front of everyone everyone's hero 
he leaves the battle to go recharge his suit so he doesn't you know malfunction during the battle and he also goes to give back up to thor so he's out of the spotlight all these cameras everyone's around watching this battle you know the world is watching uh, this invasion happen and after iron man leaves there is no one around. And so Norman Osborn steps up and starts taking the lead. And some Avengers are like, screw you, Norman. We're not following you. Like Wolverine, Spider-Man. They're like, dude, get away from us. Like, go go that way. And then when they find, like, the scroll queen and everything, like, they find the head ship and the head crew of the scrolls, uh, Wolverine is like, all right, let's go gut them. And he pops his claws and he's ready to get the, the killing blow and win for the Avengers and, and win back the spotlight because at this point the Avengers are on the run. They were un going underground because of the whole like, you know, registration act and everything. And so Wolverine's like, no, we're going to put ourselves back in the spotlight. We're going to be heroes again. He pops his claws like, let's go kill this mate, you know, these main scrolls. And so they go over to do it. But what happens? Norman Osborn comes in with his team and they take out the scrolls instead. And Norman Osborn executes one by blowing its brains out. And Norman Osborn and the Thunderbolts save the world from an alien invasion. And those last parts there, when Norman Osborn saves everybody, that happens in Secret Invasion number eight. So if you do pick up the Thunderbolts book, that is only going to lead you up into the final battle of them going to New York. And then after that, it shifts over to uh, Secret Invasion number eight, which is by Brian Michael Bendis and also Lionel Francis Yu on the artwork. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this was kind of a neat thing. It was a neat journey to see. Uh, overall, I would say there was parts of the story I really didn't like in this trade paperback uh, and some of the artwork with Fernando I wasn't a big fan of, and then some of the writing in the Secret Invasion book I didn't like. But if you just focus on Norman Osborn and the Thunderbolts and Venom and those characters, they really get an arc here. Like if you go back to the Warren Ellis stuff and you read those 12 issues and then you get the three one shots and you read what Christos Gage did and then you see those final moments where Norman Osborn saves the world, you're like, holy crap. Like talk about, you know, like a crazy arc of someone just becoming a villain, getting a second chance kind of, but on a short lease, uh, leash and then also going forward and becoming to the public a hero. And uh, that's what happens in Secret Invasion. That was my favorite part about it. I mean, I did not like the main book overall, but I liked what happened to Norman Osborn and how it set them up to become the new Avenging team, you know, the Avengers team. And so what happens is the government is like, Norman Osborn just saved us. Tony Stark left us in our, in our you know, darkest hour. Even though Tony still went and did heroic things, he just wasn't in the spotlight. People couldn't see what he was doing. And everyone looked at Norman Osborn and people cheered. And after he blew that scroll's head off, everyone was like, yay, Norman Osborn saved us. And he's like, like, yep, darn right. You know, and he's, you know, gloating. He loves it. He's like getting all that attention. Everyone thinks he's a hero. What villain wouldn't want that kind of attention and praise on some level? And so, uh, you know, when he gets that, he's like, yes. So the government calls him in and says, hey, we're going to, you know, relieve Tony Stark from duty from S.H.I.E.L.D. And we want you to run it now. And, uh, you know, Norman Osborn's like, you know what? I accept. And he's like, what took you guys so long for asking? And uh, that's where we go from here. From here on out, we have Venom. Uh, you know, I know I talked a lot, a lot about Norman Osborn in this because he's not, he's kind of the focus of the story. And Venom has his moment. So his big moment is that he just gets, he's like a dog on a leash and they unleash him. Uh, but now where he goes from here is they go into the Dark Avengers. And so after he's had his like, you know, you know, creepy, you know, emo side where he's like Matt Gargan and he's sitting in a room and he's, he's sh you know, shivering and he turns into Venom and he eats people. It's like not very interesting stuff. But now what, you know, happens from here on out, I find is interesting because Norman Osborn's able to kind of simmer down the symbiote side and turn him, you know, Matt Gargan into a black suited Spider-Man for a while. And so we're going to get into all that very soon with the Dark Avenger stuff. But yeah, this was the story that changed it all. And it put Norman Osborn and his team up in the spotlight. And, you know, to him, he was like, you know, the average person doesn't know who Spider-Man is under that mask. They don't know who uh, Hawkeye is under his mask. So why don't we take our team of bad guys and dress them up to look like the heroes? And we'll have Bullseye dress up and look like Hawkeye. And we'll have, uh, you know, a Songbird uh, or Moonstone dress up and look like Captain Marvel. And we'll have all these characters, all these bad guys on my team dress like the good guys. And he's like, so let's do that. And let's uh, really stick it to the heroes. And that's what they do for a total of like 16 issues of Dark Avengers and some crossovers. And we're going to get into all that very, very soon. One thing I will add on though is like one character we talked about in the Spider-Man video game we played was they made a reference to Swarm, which is a character made completely of bees. And there's a great moment with Venom where Swarm attacks the Thunderbolts and they can't beat him. And so what they do is they send Venom in and Venom jumps into the swarm of bees and finds the bones, like the skeleton at the center of the bees that kind of controls, it's like, you know, uh, Swarm's real human body and it's kind of controlling all the other bees. And Venom finds the, the skeleton, 
jumps through, grabs it, lands on the other side, and eats the skeleton. <laughs> and uh, then Swarm, all the bees disappear, and then each Swarm is dead. Um, so I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, uh, they give uh, Venom a big moment right at the beginning of the book, which was a lot of fun. So, yeah, there are some good moments in this if you're a Venom fan, especially the moment where him and Bullseye cut loose. That's probably one of my favorite parts of the book. It's just like, all right, we got these two dogs. Let's just take them off the leash and let them go crazy. And, they're, and Norman Osborn's like, kill everything and they're like okay <laughs> they're like kids in a candy store uh so it's uh, pretty funny on that dark humor level so uh yeah i don't know you guys let me know what you think in the comments below and uh, we'll continue the conversation down there thanks so much for watching my channel as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace